What the f is going on? I like to party. Jesus, honey, wax much? This is Unwaxed. Get in, Lizzie. We're going shopping. With Sophia and Sistine Stallone. Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs>What do you want to say since you're in such a great mood? She was just raving about how she wants to roast me. That's how happy she is, which doesn't make sense. But I'm so happy. And I only have one thing I want to say. Oh, what? Hello, everybody. And welcome back to another episode of the Unwax podcast with your favorite sisters, Sophia and Sistine. Sistine. Let me ask you a question, Sophia. Yes, Sistine. Do you like my outfit? Okay, right before this, I said she looks like she'd go to Catholic school. Um, I Chris, like what do we think? Wait, can I give context? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me give context. You've to got why. a big paper coming up. No. Yes, she has to turn in her final I homework assignment. I had a very formal, important meeting, career move meeting earlier today. So I thought in my head, how could I come across as professional, right? Like, I mean business. And I think I look like, a 12-year-old Catholic school boy. Is this ick? <laughs> no, no. That's okay, good. let me ask you another question. I also had this. And it could also... Um, no. I have... I have. What about now? You wore this to the meeting? <laughs> no, no, but I was going to. That's so try-hard, it would have been bad. Push them back a little, little bit there, a little low on the... There we go. No! Okay. <laughs> Do I look like Harry Potter? Well, I was gonna say Hogwarts reporting for duty. Yeah, literally, right now. you look like Harry Potter. I look good. But, but, my point, <laughs> but this is what I, I think it's funny is that you dressed very. Um, I, I don't even want to say sophisticated. You dressed very like school work, getting it done. You're about to go to the library, but this was a fashion meeting. You easily could have came in with a fashionable outfit. Like that's what I'm confused about. See, that's what's so funny because the I won't give away too many details, but the certain article of clothing that I'm trying to and hopefully one day create actually requires no clothing at all. So I don't know why I decided to go turtleneck up with my outfit That's today. That's what I'm saying. It's like this was the time you could have easily showcased your sense of, I mean, look, the meeting went well, but it, it went really well. It went really well. Hence so wanna, my good mood. What, what do you want to discuss about it that you can discuss? Um, I don't know. I think, hmm, what can I say? Well, how about this? You've been manifesting this opportunity since you were 14. Yes. Which is I like mean, a little bit creepy if we know what the brand is. <laughs> I actually said that in my meeting. I said, I've been passionate about creating this probably since I was 12 years old. And then I cut myself off and said, I know that sounds wrong, considering that's way too old to be interested in <laughs> right. this thing that I want to create. But they laughed, so yeah. I got a good chuckle. But no, it felt really good because um, we have such bad imposter syndrome and we don't actually think that... I don't want to speak for you, but I think we've had this conversation before. We think that we're not capable or good enough or creative enough that anyone else would see what we see in ourselves, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've had this pipe dream, I'll call it, for years, and I always just doubted that it could ever become a reality. And this meeting really just confirmed and validated yeah. everything. And it felt really good obviously putting the cart before the horse, but I'm Not now really. I just know it's more of a mindset. Now I know that I'm capable of, of doing it. So I'm very proud of myself. I held myself really strong. Um, he said I came in like a power horse. I don't know what that means, but well, you it came, sounds you good. Came in, I think it's also when you go into a meeting, knowing everything you know about that. I feel like when you have passion about something yes. and you're truly obsessed with the certain thing that she's obsessed with, which has been for years, clearly, it's easy to talk about. And on, I always say this. I say that people don't buy the company. They buy the person. So they Correct. saw you. They had faith in you because they saw your opportunity. They saw your creativity. And then they thought, okay, she's a good investment. You know what? You're very right because I told mom. You're very right. I have all those things. Thank you. Um, but I told mom. I said, because she said the same thing. You're going to be selling yourself mm -hmm. like as an individual because they're buying into you. Yep. And I said, I said, you know, maybe they think the product is shit or maybe they think I'm not skilled in this area. But there's one thing that I can agree you and I are both good at is selling ourselves. Yes. I remember when I got casted in the shark movie. 
dun dun dun, <laughs> that I dun, shot. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, sure. So I was I got casted in the shark movie, which um, very blessed, loved the opportunity. By no means do I think I was qualified or good enough. But I think what got me the role was I convinced him that I'm good enough and, and I'm just I'm selling myself. Yeah. And it, I think it works. It takes you very far. But that's a that's that's a position of fake it till you make it. This is a position of you. I, it's just heart. It's heart in something and it doesn't even need to be tried. Like you just knew what you were going to say. It's it's like for if I was talking about books, like I could go on for three hours about every type of novel and someone's going to be like, oh, she knows what she's talking about, even though I've never written anything in my life. Or well, been, let's talk no, no, about no, no, that. I don't want that. But my po- I want to keep going on you because the point is, is that you've always been into fashion. You've always been to creativity. You've always been into design. And it doesn't matter if you didn't go to like design school or school. And I feel like people need to remember that. I thought I, I, this is kind of a good lesson. I think to listeners is that you don't need all the qualifications and the check mark boxes to be successful. You know, like no. I don't, and that's this, you're like walking proof of that. You didn't need to have all the other bells and whistles. Well, I think also our potential. parents are walking proof of that too, right? Yeah. Right. They both, I don't know if Sly dropped out or got kicked out. One of the two. We've been both. And then mom dropped out for work. Yeah. And they're both wildly successful. I know. See? I know. It's, I'm it's, so proud of you. She came you. back. She was so happy. So happy, yeah, you guys. You deserve oh. it. It's nice to feel, you know, the final validation. I mean, it's not luck. Everyone's told you you're, you are who you are. Yeah, like, but it's like all, a, it's different. everyone's going to blow smoke up your ass. Like, you don't know. You, I think it's hard to trust your family or your friends saying it to you versus, I don't know. like, a professional saying Our it to you. Our family's so honest to the Actually, point that it's mean. You know what? They so, don't blow smoke up our ass. They're very <laughs> aggressive. They actually shut it down before it even starts. Wait, can we talk about your book, though? Because I had a win, but you came up to me yesterday yeah. and you said that you have... Well, no, mine's not a win. Let's just... I, I, that, this is putting the up, 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 mine's up, not a win up. until something Tell actually Tell me if this has- is... I'll ask Chris if it's a win. You need to shut your little pie hole. Chris. Sophia has been writing this novel for how long? A year. Okay, that's all you're allowed to say. A year. She had how many pages? One more question. Um, how many? P- font 11, single spaced, 160 now. 160 Damn. pages, font 11, single space. Okay. She said she had two chapters left that she's going to fly through. Well, now I have half. Half a chapter left. No, we're talking out of you, Sorry. Missy. Would you say that's impressive? Very. Okay. No, it's not. Sustain, what the? It's, why? No, it's because it's not. it's not impressive until I've actually brought it to the next step. I've been talking about writing a book for the last century. Everyone knows that. So I just don't even want to bring it up. I'm proud. I feel like once I actually press save and I print it out and I go through the first phase of editing, then I'm going to feel a little bit better about okay, it. Okay, but, but girl, you got to give yourself more credit. I mean, you're doing arguably one of the most difficult things to do, sit down and commit without someone telling you, without someone giving you deadlines, you carve out time every single day for a year to yeah. commit to something that you don't even know will go but anywhere. I'll, That's commitment. I'll, but, but I'll tell you what the difference is in terms of like, you're, you, uh, you'll you understand my mentality when I explain it like this, which is when you're working really hard on a project, just like you were working for, how many months were you working on your designs for? Oh, it was well over a year. Exactly, for a year. So basically the same, same level. You didn't feel truly confident about your project until tr- this moment. Now you're like, okay, now it's coming. For me, that version is when I'm sitting, hopefully, at a publishing meeting or with an editor, and that, and then someone says, "Oh, your work has potential." Then I'm gonna feel a bit better. But I at, get it. Before but that, at the it's same not like, time, but at the same time, I wish I gave myself that validation without hearing it from people. Because right there, we're waiting for others to say that, okay, you're good enough to believe that you're good enough. Mm-hmm. And you shouldn't be looking for acceptance from other people. Yeah. Like, what if that never comes around? You're going to constantly be in the state of like, well, I'm not proud of myself because it didn't get this far. You yeah. should be proud of yourself. I know. I think it's, I, you know what it is for me? It's almost, I think it's, you know how when you're dating someone and you put a, blockage before you even feel anything for them because you want to protect yourself. A wall. A wall. The wall. You put a wall up. You pull a wall. So for me, this has been something I'm so passionate about since I was like you. Like your thing was fashion. For me, it's literature. So for me, I kind of have to because if it doesn't work out, which is 
very likely like this is a new world that no one in my family understands I don't understand you don't understand that there is a huge chance it doesn't work out there's a huge chance it's a bad book and so I think innately I just have to be a bit defensive about I am proud like I am proud of what I've I done. think it's good you know there's a there's some steamy smut in this book Oh, actually, oh, this let is me funny. tell you, I enjoyed reading it because um, I'm not a reader, despite having glasses. Um, <laughs> I actually do have glasses. I'm not a reader. <laughs> I am blind. There's actually it, there's nothing I wished more, and this might sound so dumb when I was in middle school, than bad eyesight, because I wanted to wear prescription glasses so badly, and then when you got prescription glasses because you're basically blind without them, I was so. Jealous. I don't know why you would be jealous? It's so, so much to the annoying. point where it's I so would take too. <laughs> like, so much fun. to the point where I would take her old frames, pop the lenses out, and put clear yeah, frames in, did. just so I could wear them as well. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you wear more glasses than I actually wear. But going glasses. back, going yeah. back, I was never a big reader, so Sophia was like, "Let me find your genre." Right? She gave me horror, and she gave me smut. erotica. Erotica. <laughs> Okay. Smut. At one point, she gave me a book. Is that not the right word for it? Smut. It's called smut. Is it's it really? It's a yeah. horrible oh. word. It's, it's the book lingo for uh, sexy. See, steamy. look, I'm using book lingo. Like yeah, that. I know. I taught her. I taught you well. Wait, what does smut actually stand for? Let me look this up. Watch. It's just um, like people rank books now based on friendship, smut, adventure, fantasy, like uh. the level of everything. So when it has maybe 0.5 smut in it, you're like, yeah. There's no sex. Smut <laughs> books no are a type of literature that often associated with erotic content and explicit sexual scenes. Exactly. Yeah, so I read smut. You're like, oh, I do too. I but at one way, point. Let me just be clear. Every girl that's reading a fantasy novel right now is into smut. Fairy smut, which is probably <laughs> Fairy <laughs> smut? Yes. Yeah, so like whimsical what, smut? Yeah, it's, it's like magical smut. What do you smut. mean? Like an ogre and a pixie fairy? Honestly, what do you mean? I've read books where um, I've had a, a girl that's made of all gold with gold ribbons coming out and a guy with horns <laughs> how about this you know what Sophia gave me as the intro book she goes you love horror and you love smut well it was a it was a book I can't remember the name it was so erotic actually- that they couldn't even sell it on like goodreads well, it's really or the problem. or or Barnes no, and Noble, let me you put, had to buy it secondhand from Amazon. But I have to say, I gave her a book initially called Wallbanger. Hear me out. She gave it back to me and said that wasn't enough. <laughs> so it was so corny. So I went to the depths of You want to know how dark it got? It combined clowns with smut. <laughs> Clown play. Clown play, you sick, twisted, smutty I, girl. I, I you. wanted you to go into the depths of horror and smut. It was awful. It was not gonna lie, it was kind of good. <laughs> you can't finish it. Wait, so this is what's funny. I did so finish in, it. in my book, the two leads end up sleeping with each other. Mm-hmm. So I'm Sistine walks in while I'm writing this chapter. Oh god. And I've never written erotica before. Ever. I've like I I've I've read about it a lot, but I didn't know how to approach it. So you're walk- missing a key detail. I walk in and Sophia's playing <laughs> pinnacle, <laughs> like listening. kind of in the bedroom type music. It, like it, like old, what? What are we talking? Like the old weekend and oh, like yeah. um, oh, you know what I mean? Like, or like weekend so- at Sophia's or, or, or oh, shit. SOMO. Yeah, SOMO. Yeah, I'm so rad. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing? Like, what is this? But Sassine walks in. I'm laying flat on the ground, just closing my eyes, listening to this music, trying to, like, visualize moments. So I walk in. memories, or even just things I would want to happen. And I I was so blocked. So Sassine walks in. It was it was prime snack time. So I said, why are you on the floor? We're supposed to be eating snacks right now. And she goes, I need some help with descriptive details for this <laughs> encounter with my two leads in the bedroom and um and Sistine and I sit across from each other can you just say were you shocked Sistine helped a lot Thank and you. when I say I, we I, I was uh, I was getting a little like okay <laughs> that was pretty good I think and because I'm thinking, I got down to like the details like, like the hairs on your like stomach grabbing standing. with the mouth and pulling it I'm <laughs> sorry why would you go there <laughs> We need a read next time. We I need know. a read. Should we do a read? We need a read. I know. Oh, I, I we could get, that's my first excerpt of my book is the sex. 
It's the first scene? <laughs> no, oh. I'm saying the first time I ever read it out loud. It's just that. Can you, you know what sells. That's true. Wait, you know what be selling. Honestly, that's, that's true. So that's true. true. And by the way, I sent it to Scarlett. So I, Sistine's, Sistine's pushing it off. And she go, And by the way, it was, like, it was the funniest thing because when we were going through this scene, she was giving line by line, detail by detail, exactly how it should go. And I'm there, I'm there. These are things I've heard. Going off with my little but computer. I've never done them. Wait, I'm going off. She's like, never I've heard. She's, never. She's like, I never had. No, but I'm going off. I finish it. I'm so proud. I send it to Scarlett. Scarlett FaceTimes me. She goes, what the hell did I just read? And she, I was like, do you like it? She loved it. So I was like, I don't know if I'm, to be honest, I thought I would never disclose to people that, are going to read it that this came from our minds or also like uh, our experience yeah no, Wait, it really what it really was it <laughs> like, no, no, no. I mean, not really. no this is really gonna sell we're like if you had done this would have been this great this is like <laughs> this is like the the sneaky only fans think about it you're getting an inside scoop in a very low-key manner with different character names but you do know who it's really about but it really to be honest when i read back that scene it was almost like the best version of anything I could have. Yeah, no. Like, it's, I'm not going to lie. It was, like, the perfect scene. And honestly, that's how books are written. Super like, unrealistic. Super unrealistic. I was like, unless someone could, like, read that also, and like, do that, that'd be man, great. You, you can't be throwing us like that. Yeah. Like, we want. That'd be nice. But we, it's just not realistic. We should do a collab with your line and then my... Smut books. <laughs> I don't even know how that works. We'll figure it out. We'll figure, we'll figure it, it out. out. We're both in the same league um, here, though. Sophie and I were talking... And Chris, too, a little bit today about seasonal depression because New York has been brutal, brutal, brutal. And so I found myself Googling last night, can seasonal depression make you ugly? <laughs> Chris is like, that's what you look up. At everything, not yeah. even like the signs of being, having seasonal depression. I'm sad. I'm waking up angry. I can't sleep. Does it make you ugly? I'll tell you why. Because I walked into the room the other day and I said, Sophia, I'm not going to lie. I don't think I've ever looked worse in my life. So I had to sleep with so much fake tan on. Don't look at my hands. Only on my face. Did and you put fake tan on today? On my face. Oh, I fake tan. <laughs> fake tan? <laughs> I did, actually. Fake tan, yeah. Fake tan, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, fake tan. I did. <laughs> um, and I looked it up. First of all, did you know that the acronym for seasonal depression is SAD? S A D. Oh, is That's that? Awesome. It's that called like a, seasonal affective disorder. Sad. sad. <laughs> that makes sense, right? Um, so it probably does make you ugly because you're sad. It. I mean, yeah. clearly, but I don't think people are thinking about that. I just think it, for us, it we have a little bit of it, but we're also really angry about the fact that it's making us uglier, and so it makes us even sadder. I know. I'm so, so upset, but I also think when you look so pale and almost like sickly and you just you're in your worst form that's when your brain starts playing tricks on you right do you know what i mean yeah but it's called beauty effective is that what it was what huh? was the seasonal depression seasonal what was the a uh 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 effective <laughs> yeah beauty effective disorder bad 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 <laughs> <laughs> no but it starts getting in your head because then i remember yesterday we were sitting on the couch like what is the meaning of any of this? I will amount to nothing in life. We'll be single forever. Like we were just going through this we were going through horrible spiral. And I realized it's because there's clouds. Clowns? Clouds! Oh, clouds! I was like, clowns where? <laughs> in the book. book. <laughs> you, you would no. be thinking about clowns. Wait, you, what was the name of that book? I don't know. It was. Let me it, look it, it up. It's really creepy. Do you have seasonal depression, or do you feel like you're used to this? No, no, no. Right around like February, and I feel like it's been a shitty March. So like, yeah, yeah this is the worst time it's, of year in New York. We woke up yesterday so angry, yeah. and we we talked to each other about it. We were sitting on the couch, not speaking for probably like <laughs> forty minutes straight. Yeah. The TV is not on. We're not even looking at our phones. We're truly just looking at each other like this. And I, I don't think last year we actually experienced it because we moved here in March. So I think the oh, adrenaline. Oh, yeah, you beat it. You beat it. We beat it. It takes a, there's a ramp up period. Like through, yeah. I think about it like this, like November, December, like it's holidays. It's fine. Yeah. January still too. Like you got some of you know, the residuals of that. And then February, March is when you're just like, oh, my God, it's still happening. Like exactly. it's still cold and awful. And I need to I, I just yes. leave this earth. The, the high of the new year is gone. 
now you're just sitting in dark and cold and rainy weather. And I just keep thinking that it's supposed to be better by this point, but it's not. It no. doesn't even look like it's letting up. That's part of it all. I know. And I feel I, I don't think I've never had this before. And I'm I'm um what are you what are you pondering over there? <laughs> wow, she's deep in She's it like right brain now. blast. You're like thinking about is, the clowns? What's yeah, happening? I, know. <laughs> 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 I just I just like why do we put up with this weather? Why do you keep judging me for wanting to move to Florida? That's what I'm confused about. Like, I now this makes sense. But I also want to say, because mm. we wanted to talk about this as well, is that's probably the reason why people are getting punched. It's a good, it's prime punching season. It's prime you punching it's season. Prime punching I wanted yeah, to punch someone yesterday. I was, no, I wasn't. I wanted, I was only in my room. I wanted to punch a pillow, but I was so angry. Well, that's what's so scary, because so, all of these videos are coming up on our For You page yeah. right now of all these girls sharing a very similar experience about getting really punched scary. in the head in New York. So what did I do? I did some research. And there's actually a game that's going around. I don't know if the men... That, a game with punching girls? Yeah. Let me find the name. I can't say that the men that did the punching know about the game. But there is this... Oh, God. Don't tell me that oh, this shoot. is someone formulated this. Now it's going to be a game. That's... Hold on, let me find it. Oh, man. Regardless, these girls are just getting whacked left and right. I was clutching onto my pepper spray, freaking out as I was walking. And it's happening yeah. really close to our apartment. It's not even just in— Oh, it's right next to our it's apartment. It's right next to our apartment. So, And it's people that we know really well. And now all these girls are coming out like, oh, this happened to me last week. I just didn't talk about it. Is it I, and at first I thought it was one guy doing it all, but it seems like it's a multitude of men. But— so he's a little crazy right now. Yeah, it's a I don't crazy know. Crazy in general. Well, it's all girls actually that are getting punched are the ones that are looking at their phone, and some of them haven't been, but a lot of them in the beginning were girls that weren't paying attention. Yeah. And sorry. And these guys were saying okay. it's because you're not paying attention. Okay, so That's people are nice. speculating that it's this thing going around called the knockout game, mm -hmm. where individuals oh, will just sucker punch you out of nowhere. You've heard of it? Yeah, I feel like it was a thing like. Years ago already. Oh wait, really? yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah, no, oh, it was, I do there was remember there that. was something like that where I forget what was the situation. I think someone got knocked really bad. They went to the hospital, mm -hmm. and then it became like an oh god, I forgot what it was called. But this was actual. This was a thing. I don't even think they were targeting women. I think it was also men. There's like young guys that are just walking and or old guys that are walking around in these group of people just like knocking them I mean, but out. you know what's frustrating? As if we aren't scared enough walking down the street, especially alone. New York is Being a female, scary. period. <laughs> now we gotta duck and bob and weave because, okay, yeah, you could have pepper spray, you could have a taser, but by the time you take it out, your head's already swollen. They're like kicking us when we're already down. First the depression, now we're ugly, and now they're gonna punch us. It's just, when can it end? Honestly, Be safe. I feel like it's going to stop when the sun comes out. Please travel in groups. Yeah. I mean, you know what actually guys have been doing? Hmm. Guys have been uh, offering their services to their friends that are girls to walk them places. I love that. Writing that down. Right. I love Is that. You should do that. Right? Wait, that's right? a good move. It's also like Wait. kind of a... Wait, kind of a move, guys. Wait, I know this it's is a like, bad thing, but like, let's let's be real. If you're like a girl, you could offer your Tell me services. that's not the best slide-in ever. That's what I'm saying. If you want to see a girl this weekend, be like, with all the New York countries <laughs> going on, like, <laughs> I want to provide my services to make sure you get home safe. And like, let me walk. I mean, I would literally swim. Oh, I, if say, any yes. guy said, yeah, if anytime you need me this weekend, like, I will walk you anywhere you're alone. Oh, done. <laughs> By the way, that, that, alone, delivered. that alone would actually sell me. Oh, 100%. Person. I would say, should we get coffee after? No, I'm going to say, you're coming home with me. <laughs> I would like, you're coming walk home. me home to upstairs. Take the <laughs> through the front door. Uh, <laughs> up the elevator. Through the kitchen. <laughs> through the kitchen. <laughs> through the bedroom. <laughs> open the sheets. And fantastic. Okay. <laughs> what else? Take the pants. <laughs> Under the zipper. <laughs> Socks off. <laughs> All because he took me on a walk. <laughs> No, like a dog. That's hot. That's like a really good it's move. It's a hot move. That's that is... a hot move. Actually, I think in general, I'll just say that. You don't even have to say it for the punching. I think, guys, that might be a secret slide. Yeah, punching aside. Punching aside. That's kind of a... If a guy said, like, hey, if you're ever walking alone and I just wanted to let you know. 
Well, here's a, a, another I mean, that also could way. be creepy, depending on the guy. No, you have to know her. See, that's where I was waiting for you guys to get to this well, part. This can't be a first time <laughs> meeting with this girl. But that's, but you, yeah, see this, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, if it's a guy I don't really know, and he's like, like or Or if you're not digging him. Let's yeah, be honest. Let's be true, honest. <laughs> if you're not feeling him in general, I, it's not going to work. Let's be clear, attraction on both ends. <laughs> <laughs> so just be attractive and ask to walk <laughs> no. girls home, and you'll be if fine. Hot, don't text me home. <laughs> Oh no, my god. oh my god, it's such a <clears throat> such a selfish thing for no, whatever. But my point is, is like, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's nice. That also, guys are I think that. Um, going back to just that simple move. Well, it's not that simple. It's quite intricate. But whenever a guy says, "Let me walk you home," or "Text me when you get home," instantly, you won. Yeah. I don't know why men don't do that more. Chris, do you do you say that to women? Yeah. But like, w- great. Good. But like, tell your friends, you know? <laughs> I just, I don't understand. I should put out yeah, a PSA saying, to the, all the men. Yeah. <laughs> I Wait, don't no. understand. It's so simple. Are you telling the truth because we have so many listeners that are attracted to you oh, right yeah. now? Oh, yeah. By the way, and you've I was been... trying to make him seem like the, the hottest man behind the camera. He's no, because why comments. would you not? See, oh. That's, he, that's a good answer, you too. Guys, I think Chris has a riz. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He just giggled. He has a little riz. I think you do. Do you have like a move? No. <laughs> you can't giggle too. She's she's nervous. I have a move. I've already rizzed him twice, so I'm out. I know. I, well, I told him move. I was going to get married to him, but. And I think have my child. And I said have your child. That. Hypothetically. Aggressive riz, by Thank the way. Let's put it that way. Sophia's hardballing riz. She's yeah. not wasting any time. She's What's... like biological clock is ticking. Get here. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say something way worse. Yeah, I knew where you were go- I knew where you were going with that. Uh, wait, what was your move? Um, okay, so I could say your move right now. Oh. No. You're really creepy. Stop it. No, and not Stop. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's okay, hear it. So mean. Sophia always says that she has these powerful magnetic eyes, right? So if she's looking at someone across the bar, she'll look at them. And you'd think like, oh, she's checking me out, but the look is like this, like no, oh, I don't. shit, that is intense. She's, and then, and then she goes, then I look do, away. I don't do that at all. It's too Yo. much. You what said do you do you then? Do. Show us. You said you have crazy eyes, and you do. I, didn't say, I said, I, you told me I have crazy eyes, and so now I uh, think I, I have crazy eyes. <laughs> I thought it worked, but it. I'm not doing it. Yo, and you then she's like, it always works. <laughs> it always oh, works. She definitely says that. Oh, What's my res? Um... What's your riz? Oh God, do I even have riz? Yeah, you do this like thing with your mouth. Sorry? Ew, I don't lick my mouth. What the fuck is that? I've seen her do that. Yes. I've seen her do that. You do, <laughs> yeah. you do this thing where you like, like play with your mouth subtly and it pushes your lips out. Oh my God. I've always noticed when you like a guy, you're like, I Wait, you know I'm that- like, what are you doing? You're like swirling to like mouthwash. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, don't look like that. Relax. <laughs> you said crazy. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> we're awful. I, no, we have Riz, but we, <laughs> I, no, no, I don't really have that much Riz. Actually. But then again, every guy says that, I remember we put out this episode and I said that I was making first moves with men. All the men in the comments were said, no, power dynamics automatically off. This is a bad idea. We even had male podcasts that specialize in relationships, stitching our videos saying that this is the worst thing you could possibly do because then, you know, like they're going to think that you're better or you have this, I don't know, it was like all these nonsense. Mm-hmm. But I always thought guys liked it. Wait, what was the main point that they were making? Were they yeah. saying that like it's going to lead to a bad relationship or the guys don't like they it? They were what saying is- that the power dynamic is instantly off and men actually don't like when women make the first move because you're trying to take in this masculine role when you're not masculine. I think that's a particular type of guy. Isn't that, like, mm-hmm. I was so I confused. But all the comments right. were like that. I, like, oh. I know, it, it's it's polarizing because men are, half of them are saying, we love when a woman makes the first move and then half of them are saying, but, I, but it just takes away their manlyhood I and think then the, they're not going to. The, the men you. that were saying that, though, are in a different generation of man than us. They were much older, so maybe it's their yeah, old school. Probably, because I know that we are more inclined, obviously, today to reach out to someone first. While guys back then, were that was kind of all they focused on. But You know what wait, I want? I want to talk about my date that I talked about last week. I forgot about that. Speaking of 
guys. Mr. Artist. Yeah. And I told him I wasn't going to talk about it, but I will. <laughs> Can you please? This is my art. <laughs> this, is, this is my yeah, This is my art. That's true. Dude. Can you please describe what this artist was wearing so I have a visual? Okay. Actually, he looked great. And uh, he has good style. So he, oh, shoot. Actually, now I'm forgetting what he wore. Um, he had good shoes. I know we said last time he was wearing, I forgot what shoes they were, but they were shoes. Four. <laughs> Nice. Off to a good foot. start. No, they were they were uh, black. I don't even know what to. They weren't they weren't like normal sneakers. Suede. No leather. I think they leather be leather shoes. Boots and, and like kind of a good pair of tailored. They weren't jeans. They're like more tailored pants. And then a lighter. Oh, like a crew. dress pant. Yeah, almost a dress pant. So artsy. Was he wearing a wife beater tucked into it? No, it was. Oh. He was but he was wearing a casual top. Mm. And then. I don't, I don't even know what the green... <gasps> Wait, let me grab this. One sec. Oh my gosh, she's grabbing a Resi notification. Oh man, how can people catch it this fast? Gotta be quicker than that. It just popped up right now. <laughs> okay, whatever. But no, he had a very cool look. Wait, what was the green thing? It was he was wearing like a green long sleeve. A green scarf? Can, did I say scarf? I just said green long, long sleeve. But you said he was wearing a white shirt. With a green long sleeve on top. Oh, like a cardigan. A no, not a cardigan. Like, you know, a button up that you just put over a white. Oh, okay. Oh, God. Shirt. Don't you say a button up. Jesus. I, you keep going green. Yeah. Green. It did, I, it oh, did I give a cardigan like oh, shawl. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. You're me. Okay. So, sorry. So, he was wearing more of like a, I think, not a white shirt, like a nude white normal shirt with a long button up green. But, like, he took that off and then he had a cool trench coat. Trench coat. Yeah, I, but I, I could pot, tot, like totally be butchering what the names are for that. Um, but yeah, no, he's definitely not the type I would go for because I've never been to artsy. Like you, she's always been into artsy guys. Yes, and if, we've had this discussion. She likes musicians and artists and actors. Like that's always been the people she's leaned towards. Sophia uh, so, likes real estate guys, <laughs> finance guys. I like the I like the people yeah. that work in nine. To I five. like the crunching numbers. <laughs> Like they someone. come home stressed and angry. Well, yours come home crying and emotional. <laughs> no, mine don't come That's home. Sad. That's the difference. That's yeah, sad. they're out all night. Yeah, yours, mine are locked in their room on their like double screen. Like, yeah, man, let's go to Aspen this weekend. Yours your actually guys have are a like job. at some mine gallery. Are, mine are freelance working on an app. Yeah. Oh God. Entrepreneurs. What, regardless. Um. Okay, this is what actually was very different about the state, and I wouldn't talk about this if he hadn't done this move. So I sit there. It's a Monday date. Which is a very random day to have a date, right? And he brings me to this hotel lobby, <gasps> oh, hidden yeah. gem, by the way. Hotel lobbies, if they have a really good in front area. Hotel lobbies are the best first yeah. date because you can also order food yes. if it's going well. You yep. can order food, and it had a little mm -hmm. fireplace, and it was low lit. It was perfect. And you know what he says to me when the waiter comes up? He goes, I know it's a Monday. Would you rather have drinks or we can have tea? Tea. Wow. He offered tea. I... I was like, she was kicking her heels. She was so happy. I was so happy because I feel like there's this pressure to have to drink on a date, no matter what. We've said this before. Like, yeah. and sometimes we don't want to drink. Sometimes I'm on a Wednesday and I don't feel like having a cocktail. Sometimes I feel like having a good night's rest the next day because I already know if I'm on a date, I'm having at least two drinks max, minimum. Yeah. And so going on that and him just kind of saying, do you want mint tea or whatever? I go, Please, thank you. What kind of tea did he have? We both had mint. And Ooh. it was so nice. Think For about kissing? it. We didn't kiss. Oh. Uh, but why it was great was that, you know, obviously if you're nervous before a date, you can do what you want to do. But actually it felt like a lot less pressure after having tea just because it felt like if he was willing to do it, he obviously just wanted to relax and have a nice conversation. That's so true because you know? I feel like having a cocktail – is such a crutch on a date. Yeah. And I don't like feeling the need to feel buzzed in order to be relaxed or calm. And I think if you need to get a certain level of drunk to feel comfortable with the person you're seeing, whether it's a first, second, or third date, then you probably shouldn't be seeing them. Yeah. And I also think this. When you have a cocktail or, t or tea, the vibes are very different. Cocktail is very sexy. Take and your pants off. You you are just with these zingers. The it's just sexy. It sets the mood of like ooh anticipation. What who what are we gonna do? Cat and mouse game. When you have tea, you're just you're just there to. Do you chill. talk about family stuff? We talk. Yeah, we just sat on That's, the couch, had some mint tea. 
it, like I knew I was going to have a good conversation because I like to talk clearly, but it just kind of honestly made me feel way less nervous. I was able to kind of metaphorically kick my shoes off and just enjoy it. So and are you going to see him again? Well, I don't, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but he walked me home, which was nice. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. We didn't kiss, which was also nice, actually. Shocking. I know. Very on, not on brand for Sophia. Very on brand for Sistine to not do it. And yeah, it was a good date. So I just want to encourage people to drink tea. <laughs> well, just when you feel, you don't have, I mean, if you both want to do it, obviously, like it just felt nice to offer, get the offer. I love drink. it. Actually, I love that offer. Yeah. And it was funny because that was the first thing I said to Sistine when I walked out. She was like, how's the day? I go, we drank tea. I was like, that's <laughs> so nice. I was like, have you ever done a tea date? I have not. Why would, what a, Chris Why? What, would never a, do a tea date. Chris's type no of date is. Oh, I'd love to hear this. What's my type oh, of date? No. <laughs> Chris hear. is. No, don't think about it too hard. Best of the best. <laughs> Renting out Dave and Buster's full experience. Renting Dave, full Dave experience. and Buster's. You can't tell me you'd be like, I'm going to kill you at the ski ball. And like, that's honestly, that'd be such a fun date. Oh, yeah. I feel like you are kind of like one of those. Like, let's do it. Like, like let's, let's like, be have, like a pool like, table. Yeah, something fun, like a billiards <laughs> club, bar. Yeah, I dig that. Right? Like, or like there. you play some darts. Yeah, that's what totally else can you do at a bar. Maybe for a fun trivia night. Trivia night. I love trivia night. Love I've trivia always night. wanted to do a trivia. You're not night a karaoke date. guy. No. 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 You're not. I, I see it. Um, and you <laughs> she's like reading would judge palm. a girl if she walked <laughs> past with you, uh, one of those scam psychics, but you wouldn't say anything. You'd be like, all right, you'd go with it. Because she'd be like, when oh, I let's go, go in. in. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah probably, but you'd I'd be inside, you'd be like, stupid. But you, uh, you want to make her feel bad. You'd be like, oh, sure. Like, whatever. That's exactly correct. Yeah. Exactly correct. Congratulations. Thank you. You read Chris's Thank you. dating outcomes. Um, how do you pronounce ho- Hoiser? Hoser? Hosier? Hosier, I think. Yeah. I believe so. Um, I'm on this train. I think he's like the internet daddy at the moment. <laughs> that was not what I was going to say. What train are you on? Just enjoyment of his music. <laughs> not that he's you a can't t- tell me he's if an a Irish man, god. I don't care what he looks like, how old he is, where he comes from. If a man wrote lyrics like he has oh. about you i am at your disposal hosier <laughs> like oh it just take, like i'm sorry let me take me to church no let me read his he's news he's been in here before sorry Shut up. yeah i met him he was cool as fuck what cool. where did he sit i think there i gotta double check i'll verify i'll verify i'm so jealous I'll wait verify. a minute are you kidding yeah he's very cool no. It was so creepy. I'm like rubbing the chest. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. That's actually really cool. No, but his lyrics, I'm sorry. My lover's got humor. She's a giggle at a funeral. Everybody's disapproval. I wish I worshipped her sooner. If the heavens ever did speak, she's the last true mouthpiece. Oh. Every morning's getting more bleak. I think it's like that. Yeah. She. We were. It's just, it, that one alone is just so big. I actually was just listening. To, I'll tell you a hack. Do you want to get over seasonal depression? <laughs> I'll tell you Ooh. what I did today. I had to walk and go grab something in the rain. I had my umbrella. Just blasted hosier. And it was so cool. And I felt like I was in a music video. It was See, I'm an song. Arctic monkeys girly in the rain. Really? Do you care? No. No, I do care. But I just am not an Arctic monkeys girl. Yeah, you're Matt Healy, <clears throat> 1975. Oh, God. I love what do you prefer? I don't know. I'm I'm getting over the fact the Arctic monkey sling had an ex that loved them that ruined my life. Wait, wait, wait. Say oh, that again. <laughs> what ruined your life? An ex that was a big Arctic <gasps> monkeys. By the way, I always think the most toxic girls are Arctic I monkey agree. Fans. In the worst I think part they do. <laughs> I actually agree. No, the, we're like the worst. No, no, no. Self awareness is key, though. No, no. no the, we're, we're the worst. I actually have a frame. Even his ex like destroyed him at one point. Didn't he like write music about his ex girlfriend? Like- Probably. I have a huge framed poster from one of their tours like oh my in my God. apartment. That's he trouble. was my screensaver for like two years. That's I, trouble. It's so bad. That's trouble. It's so bad. And yeah, guess what Sophia did? For Christmas, she got me Arctic Monkeys tickets, right? I was hysterical. <laughs> this is all I've ever wanted. Mm-hmm. She exchanged the tickets for a 1975 concert <laughs> for herself. No, that's so... Good for you. So Thank you. But that's you, so honestly. not true. Let me clear the air for everyone listening. Chris. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we were working. We were working during the concert, so I refunded the tickets, and instead of giving the money to Sistine, I just said, 
Just, she got herself tickets. But she came. How about that that Christmas gift you never gave me? She gave me a free pole dancing lesson. No, class. I didn't. You told me you didn't want to do something like but that. But that was a gift that just and then she's like, I got the tickets and then pole dancing. And I didn't get either. We got I'd like to go pole dancing. You wanna do that? Well See, that's why I asked, <laughs> I asked if she wanted to do it and she said like Well, do you want to hear well, something crazy? So I know a story about a gal that went to one of those pole dancing classes and ended up getting chlamydia all over her legs. Can you get chlamydia from a pole? Because of the poles and all well. her friends got them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind I of pole, got it. That okay. took you a little That's bit longer. Yeah, surprised. I think she was after class a little yeah, extra yeah, credit, yeah. maybe. See? You know, that sounds like an after studies type situation. Actually, that sounds like an alibi. <laughs> when that, I think about it. That's, yeah, <laughs> really. That's that sounds. Babe, it wasn't. It was the pole. <laughs> like, yeah. She learned her moves. Went home. Uh, <laughs> Wait, let's talk about this toxic Arctic monkey. Oh sex. Jesus! Wait, so was she a big, big fan? Um, I no, I don't think particularly <laughs> big. Don't grill him. This is not. His. I want to see if we have similarities. Oh, if it's geez. just like the type of girl, the archetype. She have brown hair and brown eyes. Oh no. Black hair, brown eyes. Yeah. Brown I was gonna. Type. I was gonna dye my hair darker this Friday. Were you I really? won't do it. Yeah. Don't go darker. You think I should go darker? Don't Look do like it. a witch. It's already dark. You're yeah. like it's really dark. I thought it would like make me feel better. For what? Seasonal depression. <laughs> oh, jeez, Louise. Wait, how, how much time have we been doing this? Oh, you want to leave? You want to leave? I have a question. I have a question. <laughs> I don't have my computer, so I'm, I'm really lagging on the content. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Here's my question of the week. Ooh. I love these questions. We actually do really... I will say, everyone's been loving our questions like rom-com with... Uh, well, you know what's so funny? It's I think so we funny. really give good content, right? But the shit that goes viral, <laughs> I think we're just fire, think we're actually. Here. But the shit that goes viral is like, would you rather be here or there? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like come no, on. It's, so, it's actually... Where so, our deep, meaningful shit goes nowhere. No, it's so true. Every, every time I try to give some profound lesson, I'm like, wow, that was really good. Two girls like it. The rest is like, would you rather be stuck in Hogwarts? Or no, to be fair, I be love Dumbledore for a day. Like it's saying, <laughs> look, okay. We well, how about this the one then? Fuse. I'm giving the people what they want. All right. <laughs> Would you rather have eyes that can film everything or ears that can record everything? So wait, I have a question. You can't have both. Okay. <laughs> yeah, got it. So, so, it, so the visuals, can you can't hear anything. Exactly. Eyes that can record everything, or ears that can listen to. I think ear actually See this this actually will explain a lot about your character. So I'm curious to know what you guys both would say. Well selfishly, if we're having a fight, I would love to have the ear recording thing. Okay, Chris, what would you But do? I don't but now it's view. I think it's my eyesight. You're doing eyes? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, yeah, I do eyes. The terrible segue because I was just about to say I feel like you got to be really horny to pick eyes. I'm gonna go ears. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that's so smart. I didn't even think about that. Oh, How damn. is that not like one of the first things you? I guess such that's a dude man. brain. That's dude brain. Ah, that's such a dude. <laughs> that's dude brain. Oh my god, that's I didn't even so. Think about that. Smart. So true. See, I think what I was gonna say is I think all girls would pick ears because they want to say, well, Becca, I can actually quote you on this because you and they want to eavesdrop on people, and it's almost like a voice note in your brain that you can have all the time. Or if you're breaking up with a guy and you can show your friends later. Ooh. But guys, that's genius. Ooh. And Wait. wrong. But here's, genius. Uh, yeah, here's my counterpoint to it. Everybody thirst traps, so like, if you really want to see something, you you can find it. That's anyway. true. So you I know, pick ears for that you, reason. Okay. Okay. What do you choose? I think I would do ears because I need it for my future debates and arguments. You know what? Yeah. I I yeah. said I love having visuals of things. Like, there's so many moments that are really sweet that I would love to record, but. I also feel like words just mean so much more. Hundred percent. In general, because you know? let me ask you this. How often do you go back in your camera roll, July 4th, 2016, to look at that fucking firework video you recorded? <laughs> never. Yeah, never. Never? How many times do you go back and listen to that concert you went to 2020 in Coachella? Not really. Never. No. More frequently, but... Okay, just you then. <laughs> He's amping himself up. <laughs> Point being, what do you need to re-watch that you've already seen? Yeah, that's true. Like... I feel like this is going to spiral me. 
I had all those notes to go back, I'd never get over anyone. Yeah, that's I would, a good point. You know, that's also the problem is like thinking about it. If I see something, I can't hear it. It's like looking at my camera roll. roll. It's nice, but I don't think I would go crazy. I think it would just be like an endless amount of just footage that is going to make me sad. But if I'm hearing their voice saying that they love me. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, it's just never going to end. Like, I don't know. I feel like I would. Mm, oh, damn. Yeah, I think voice. Oh, man. I'm just going to cry all the time. I think I'd, what are you? I like how this became like a what's more detrimental to my mental health <laughs> conversation. Way, but that was actually my first thought was because I'm like, I know my mental state and it would be demolished if I could hear <laughs> someone say how much they, I mean to them. And then I'm just going to be sad the whole time. And then, oh, man. But then I can replay like the fights, and then that's also going to make me really bitter. Why? Why? Are, like all the negative <laughs> stuff. Like, what about a funny joke? Yeah. Or, like, <laughs> I I like to go. Why back would you want to record your fights with your ex? Like, I wouldn't want that. That's well, true. You could choose what you record. I think in this. Yeah, of situation. course. Is it like boom boom? Yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, <laughs> Apple's going to come out with that contact lens. Well, that's or a very Black Mirror question. Ooh. Because that's remember that um, there's an episode where they they created a app or installment in the brain that your parents are able to look at you through your eyes mm -hmm. and so but you can block them there's like a child block whatever the, all so this whole shit show happens <gasps> where you know you can record your kids view like what they're doing and so something happens so i wouldn't be surprised because black mirror is not that far off from a lot of things do you know why happening. it's called black mirror because your phone's green no i know you didn't, phone screen is uh, you didn't say anything. Oh, wait, actually, can I bring this up also? Speaking of really weird stuff, okay. these VR headsets are scaring the hell out of me. I'm not going to lie. Seeing people wearing VR goggles, walking mm -hmm. around totally normal like this, if that is where my kids are going to end up in the next 15 years, I'm moving. I to, can't say I've seen anyone I'm in New I'm moving to Bora around. Bora. I'm moving to the Galapagos. I'm moving to another country. I don't where, believe you because or Hawaii. I'm so sorry. Hawaii. You are gonna be an iPad mom with your kids. No, that's for so false. Sure. Yeah. You're gonna be an iPad mom. Me? I'm not an iPad mom. I know mom. I am. I'm not no, denying no. it. I'm not. I'm gonna be like you're reading for three hours before bed. You are going to be so strict. So you take back what you They're just gonna said. sneak out the window. I'm gonna be the best. They're gonna come over to Aunt Sistine's for some lucky charms and some sugar. And then your kids are gonna be like, we need more structure. Where's our Aunt Sophia? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. At the uh, library. You know what's, <laughs> you know what's so Sweetie, come to the library. You know what's so crazy? We're so competitive. No, with everything. your kids are gonna call, they're gonna go, um, Aunt Sophia, mom didn't take us to school today. <gasps> And I'd be like, she no. slept in. <laughs> she slept in. She hasn't woken up for two said, days. She said, Mama needs her beauty sleep. <laughs> she's having a bad air day. <laughs> yeah, she's, not, she's still faking in her tan. Mom says something about seasonal depression, <laughs> but it's summer. So, Mom says so. she's SAD. I don't understand. We're four hours late to school. And then I'm going to come over, pick the kids up with little lunch boxes, all organized, little food. And then I'm going to play a little screen. I'm going to have the car obviously with the tv screens in it. you want to hear something funny but um my dad was so strict about what we could watch and um we had to read into a tape recorder every single day for probably 10 years for an hour and he would test yeah. us if we didn't he would actually scroll ahead and listen yeah. to it for the whole hour so we had to do that every day but in terms of what we watched he wouldn't let us watch any cartoons in english because he wanted us to be bilingual. So the first memories of SpongeBob for us, Spanish. Did that work? Like, did you guys no. become? No, no I actually okay. had a severe speech delay because I didn't know what language to speak. Severe speech delay. And then we watched Balto. It, well, it was, it was he, he raised us with Spanish, Japanese, and um, German. Or no, no, and German, then in, it was and then French, French. If we wanted to watch an English show, we had to watch Liberty Kids, which is like a historical, it teaches kids about the Boston Tea Party and yeah. it, like all this oh history. Oh my God, I used to love Liberty Kids. Oh my God. Because it's the only English thing So ever. then we'd go over to our aunt's house and we're like, oh my God. She'd make us the German Mean girls, French like <laughs> fun movies. She'd make us this French toast. This is so good, guys. It's She makes French toast and mm. then she dips the French toast in pancake powder. I mean, it's oh. heart attack. It is the best it's thing beautiful. in the entire beautiful. world. You know what? Speaking of that, I can't wait to start cooking again. Because I want to be that wife 
and that mom that can just make those things every day. I'm not going to lie. Your dinner last night was like a solid six out of ten it, because it was clean and healthy it was one because of, we're getting summer sorry, body ready Susan gave us for dinner it was healthy i was chopped this is all raw bell pepper broccoli and cucumber you said raw and avocado raw, raw. raw. well of course she, it's all she raw. was calling it a cold salad i'm it not done it. okay no, wait no let me stop 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 Okay, and then I said, can we put the avocado I in there? I bought avocado for it. Um, with olive oil dressing. And then salmon, this big. With you this said you wanted salt, half! With, with salt and pepper. I didn't say half. Man, salt and pepper. Oh and that's it. And I made, I had and garbanzo so I was, beans and hummus. And, and, and a garbanzo beans with it's lemon. It's supposed to be like a meze. It was. Meze platter. No, I was starving. It was this big, this much. By the end of it, I pulled out our chips and our, <laughs> was yeah. like, it was nothing. So I'm going to say it was a six, uh, five out of ten. You've made better stuff. You can't just give us fried. By the way, raw broccoli is the grossest thing on the planet. It was so good. Do you like raw broccoli? I didn't even know that was a thing. Exactly. It's chopped really fine. Okay. The photo looked exactly like what I made. It's supposed to be one of those cold crunch salads. Not with. And there was lettuce in there. Yes. Yeah, so I Because I want a cold <laughs> crunch salad with a tiny piece of salmon when it's pouring rain outside and it's 40 degrees. That was rabbit food. Yeah, rabbit food. I said, rabbit that's rabbit what I food. said, Chris, I said, do you want me to cook again tonight? And she goes, no. <laughs> she goes, I'm going to the grocery store. Should I cook? I go, no. I fine. really want to be, you know what I want to really make well? Like Indian food. Like I want to be able to make yeah. butter chicken. That, well, that's I want to make favorite. homemade naan. Mm. When I make homemade naan, Chris is coming over. Oh, and yeah. He's going to test for it. No sure. rabbit. Well, you I get know. the rabbit food for big dining. I love me. Indian food. I think it's my favorite. I think that in Mediterranean is my favorite food. Oh, we'll talk after the episode, but I think we should wrap it up. Okay, okay. cool. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to this, of course, once again. Absolutely crazy podcast that makes no sense it's the rain but Sistine's in a good mood she's not sad sad seasonal depression anymore um but if you guys want to find us find us on she's just bad (laughs) tiktok (laughs) okay shut up um tiktok youtube instagram um find us on spotify apple everything is under unwax podcast and give us that five star and we love you guys so much ask us those questions in the dms because we will answer it next week love you